You guys remember what we talked about last week? The verse was John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1. 1, 1. So let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1. So, sir, we're going to kind of go back to the basics, right? It's kind of what I want to do. So, it was what? John 1.1. 1, 1, what does John 1.1 1, 1 say? beginning was the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with god so in the beginning was the word and the word was what with god with god and then what and the word was god and then it says in the word was god what does that mean right and i asked you guys last week and i said what does it mean so when we talk about jesus i asked where is jesus or what is jesus and some of you said that when we look at God and we look at Jesus, uh, you said Jesus is here. Okay? Who agrees with this? Who was it? It was Kimmy? Who else? Elmer? That's it? So? I wasn't here in class. I know. Well, what do you think then? In relationship to the Father, where is Jesus? With God. Okay. Is it this relationship? Um, I'll let you. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, no, I understand the question. But? But. I'm going to let you. Continue the class because you don't have because I have an answer, but I, I'll share with you at the end of the class. Oh, okay. So we have two people that believe it this way, right? And you have a different <laughs> perspective on it. Um, Josh, what was yours? That it overlaps. God. Josh said it's God. And Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Josh? Yeah. So Josh said this. Okay. Carla said this. Okay. Which is separate than this. Okay. David? I don't remember. But now I'm, I'm not sure. This was a small circle next to God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you, do you lean more here? Yeah. Yeah? No? You don't know? No, no. Okay. Oh, why is this important that, that we understand this? Like, why? Why do you think this is important? Kimmy? Tell me. Why, do we think why, why is it important that we get... Like a really complete understanding of this, right? Like why? Um, it's the foundation. I mean, of the understanding of God. the center of our salvation is Jesus, right? I mean, really, that's that's what it is. So if if it's Jesus is the center of our salvation, He is the center of 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 really of, of, of who we are, then we need to get some sort of understanding of who Jesus really is, right? So if John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, who's the Word? Jesus. Jesus. The Word was with God, right? And then it says, and the Word was, was God. So is John saying that <laughs> Jesus is God? Who says yes? One, two, three. What is it? Are, and the other three? You don't know or you don't want to comment? Or you'd rather not comment? Elmer? I don't know. Okay. Kimmy? Okay. I don't know if this is going to make sense. But okay. um, I, don't, I don't know if you're saying that the word is... I mean, that Jesus is God, but I feel like he's 
Oh, I, this is how I see it. That what? he's explaining that Jesus is like the image of God, I guess in other words. That Jesus came... Oh, my goodness. Um... I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> so, or let me ask this question. How many do you believe that Jesus was created by God? No? Okay. Has Jesus always existed? Since when? Okay. What began? Okay. Okay, <laughs> so if we look at it, right? If we... Heaven bought markers. Okay. If John is saying in the beginning, and we're talking about creation here, okay, this is the beginning of creation. This is Genesis. And somewhere here is what John's talking about. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And what does verse 2 say? Somebody. He was in the beginning with God. Keep going. All things were created through him, and without him nothing was created that was created. Okay. So look what verse 2 says. Verse 2 go his, go, goes ahead, and he reemphasizes that he was with God in the beginning. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with him in the beginning. Everything that was created was created through him. If nothing would have been created, if not through him, who is him? Jesus. So everything is created and everything exists because of whom? Jesus. Jesus. Because everything was created through him. So therefore everything exists because of him. Does that make sense? Okay. So. But that puts us in a, in a particular problem. Okay. That if in the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God. Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. John says and everything was created through him. And nothing would exist if not by him. And then when we read certain verses, then we kind of throws us off. So let's go to Deuteronomy 6 4. And what does it say? The Lord is one. Huh. So Deuteronomy 6 4 says God is what? One. One. So if Deuteronomy says that God is one, but John says in the beginning was Jesus with God and Jesus was God, then how do we tie this in together? My version says alone. That he was alone. With your version of what verse? Four. Six four. The Lord alone is one. The Lord alone is one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. So, what do we do? What do you think? If Deuteronomy says God is one. John says he was with God, and God, Jesus was God. Then how do these? How do these relate? The Lord is one, as in like they were worshiping other gods at that time. So therefore, he wasn't referring to any other god, but the God, the one God. The one God. Separating from the other God. So then what is the concept of God do we have? The one we're... God amongst the other gods. Okay, so one God That's amongst God. the other gods. So one God, but God is one. So how do we tie this? Watch. Let's go to John. I'll confuse you a little more. John 10. <clears throat> John chapter 10, verse 30. Go ahead, Carla. And who is saying this? Jesus. Jesus is saying that what? <laughs> that him 
and the Father are one. Now let's go to 10, uh, 14, 1420. Elmer? Um, in that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Okay, so Jesus is in the Father. And the last one, 17, 20, 21, Marisol. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So what is Jesus saying? What is Jesus saying? What's he saying about his relationship to God? He is in him and God is in him. And they are one. One. So how do we make sense of this? Somebody give me an idea. Let's start with uh start with Dave. Dave, how do I make sense of this? Give me something. How do I make sense of it? Or how can you make sense of it? Or if, like, what would you say about it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Tell me something. No? Josh? Like wherever their wherever the legs go, the head goes, stuff like that. It's like the one. Huh. So one body. Yeah. How how can I make sense of that? But it's still one body. Yeah. Okay, so are you saying Jesus is one part, God is the other? Of yeah, one. The, the, they're both fractions to create one. Okay. Alright, so. Yes. Yeah, come on. Something. <clears throat> Are we, uh, Kimmy, help your cousin up. <laughs> <laughs> I almost gave me. Oh, you could do that. I think it's beautiful that even in the verse it says that he genuinely, he wants us to be with them. Like they have us in mind. Yeah. You know? Of course. These godly, perfect beings want a piece of us yeah. with them. Absolutely. It's it's what it's, it's what makes grace grace. You know, that perfection of who they are still desires something imperfect. It's crazy because yeah. I, you know, how many of us would go and sit with the hobos? Mm -hmm. How many of us would go and sit with people who are Disgusting, look disgusting, you know? Yeah. Not many, if any. So how do we, how, how is this make sense, right? Like how do we make sense of this? And here's, here's the issue you're having, okay? And I'm going to say it because it's the issue you're having, right? It's, it's the way you've been taught. It's the way you've been raised, okay? And you're not the only ones who have asked this question. I've asked this question to the men. And I've said, men, like, who do you think, what do you think the relationship with God is? And, and they said, well, we believe that God is here and that Jesus is here. And this is a hierarchy, okay? God is above and Jesus is down here. Some believe that Jesus was actually created by God based on Philippians 2.6 which we'll read it a little later. So the idea that most of us have, that most of you have had, 
is that it is God on top and Jesus at the bottom. So therefore, when John 1.1 1, 1 says that Jesus is God, then all of a sudden, like what you've been taught, which is this, contradicts what biblical scripture is actually saying. Jesus in John 10 and 14, 17, you and I are one. We are one in nature. It is, we are one together. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So what it's actually saying is Jesus is God. But that contradicts what we believe. We believe that it's God and then Jesus. Instead of believing that it's God and Jesus. See, instead of thinking it kind of like this, right? And here's where we're really going to get into trouble. Okay? Is that when I think of God, I think that God is this. It's one God composed of two beings. And that's when it sucks for a lot of you. Because this is not really what we've been taught. So when we think of God or me, right? When I think of God, I don't think of God in this aspect. I think of God like this. God, two in one. One being, two natures. Jesus and God. God is composed of Jesus. And I shouldn't say God. I should say the Father. And actually, I should say Christ. And I'll tell you why later. But you guys don't like this, do you? Kimmy? <laughs> so, it, okay, just real quick. I don't know if this will make sense or not. But, um, so if the way. You just said right now. So where would we put the Holy Spirit at? Ah. You see, that when we get into another problem, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason we get into another problem is because church doctrine dictates that the Holy Spirit is an essence that comes from them. When I say essence, Rob, what? Explain essence. It's like a power. Mm -hmm. Like a power. That comes from them. Okay, so the problem, and, and I'm not, I'm gonna go on a limb and say this, okay, especially because it's on video, okay, <laughs> is that, here, I'll use Carla, okay, Carla believes, okay, three in one, yeah, or here, except that. God is on top. There's somewhat of a hierarchy. They are equal in nature in God, but God is here. Just so you have an understanding of what this, and please just take it for what it is because that's because you asked. Who's more human, me or President Obama? Right? So who's more who's more human? Me or I don't know, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> In nature, we are the same. In um, responsibility, there is a hierarchy. In nature, me and President Obama are both human. And we're worth exactly the same. But in responsibility, it's Obama who has a higher responsibility. Does that make sense? Okay, let me erase it. For you in trouble. Okay? So when you ask about where is the Holy Spirit, in the doctrinal belief, the Holy Spirit is not part of the God. It is something that comes from Christ and comes from the Father. It is a power that comes from them. So it's two in one. Carla believes it's three in one. Okay, this is what most people 
belief. As the church, our doctrine states that Christ and the Christ and the Father are one, that God is composed of when we say God or when you think God, you should be thinking Christ and the Father, two in one, and the Holy Spirit is something that proceeds from the Father and Son, a power that comes from them that dwells in us today. So when we say in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, then it makes sense that Deuteronomy 6 says, Hear, O Israel, your God is one, because it is one God with two natures, Christ and the Father. That's what Jesus says when he says, when you, are, you and I are one, may they be one with us. So God, when we think God, we should be thinking the composure, or it's composed of, God is composed of Christ and the Father. Questions? There has to be questions. If that's what our church doctrine states, how come our church doesn't Our church doctrinal statements teach it this way. Our church individually does not see it this way. I don't know why. But Church of God Seventh-day Doctrine puts it this way. We've been taught. I was taught this way. God, or the Father, and Jesus. There is a, you know, instead of seeing it this way. Who doesn't like this? Be honest. Who likes it or is Somebody. Kimmy, talk to me. I'm behind. Okay. I like it, like I guess you said we weren't we weren't raised believing right. that they're two in one. Yeah. Right. We weren't. We weren't. But there's really no biblical substance for teaching it any other way. Uh, let me rephrase that. There's no heavy doctrinal substance for believing in the other way, especially based on the verses that we have when God is always one, especially when we look at the Old Testament and the Old Testament, it's just God, right? And that's something we're going to get into. Like, where is Jesus in all this? Well, if Jesus is already existing in the beginning in Genesis, I mean, I'm sorry, pre-Genesis, if in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God, that means that Jesus existed pre-creation. So Jesus existed with God, so Jesus existed with the Father pre-creation, before the earth was actually created. They just simply existed together. So we can't say that, and which is one of the things that some believe is that Jesus was created later. No, Jesus has always existed since the beginning. Whatever beginning that is, he's always been there. And then you ask the question, then where was he in the Old Testament? If there are one, is there evidences of Jesus in the Old Testament? Absolutely. And we're going to get into that. We're going to see Jesus. He's just not called Jesus. He's called something else. It's freaking amazing. So. Questions. Doubts or just. Do you think I'm out of my mind? Okay. All right, so if we look at, uh, let's go to Philippians, while well, we're on the subject, and then we're going to look at Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. 2.6. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Okay, anybody have a different version? <laughs> Though he was God, asterisk, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Anybody have a different version than that? 
I don't know, what does your version say? Um, who, though he was in form, he was in the form of God, did not count equality with, with God a thing to be grasped. Who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. So being in the very nature, so being in the very nature of God, who being with God, who being next to God, who being God, did not consider being God or being in the same nature as God as something to use to his own advantage. So what did he do? What does it say? What's the next verse say? Rather what? Emptied Seven. He emptied himself. What does another version say? Gave up his divine. Gave us his and mind says and mind says rather he made himself nothing but taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness so being in this state being in the state of God being in the state with the Father being in the very nature of the Father being in the same essence of the Father did not consider something to be to to have to his own advantage so he made himself into a servant he made himself or he he um. What's the word he uses? He made himself nothing. So mine says, um, Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of bondservant and coming in likeness of men. So based on this verse, in what, in what, in what nature or what state does Christ exist? Based on this verse. And what state does Jesus exist? How does he exist? What is his essence? Human. Well, in the beginning, he made himself human. But before that, how does he exist? In what nature? He had to give it up. Had to give what up? His divinity or his godly nature. His godly nature. And he gave that up for what purpose? Our purpose our purpose so it's it's christianity is the only religion that has a god willing to make himself human to save humanity there is no other god there is no other god that sacrifices himself to save those that he's created it doesn't exist and that's why Christianity is so, it's, it's so, so weird and so odd and so like, unlike any other religion, because it is the God who creates, who makes himself in the nature of his creation, leaving his divine state to become a servant. It just doesn't make any sense. That's why grace doesn't make any sense. In this verse, is, um, would it be... <clears throat> that in being equal to God, he still was, um, like, not belittling, but um, humbled himself before God. And in that state, before coming and humbling himself before man. So oh, we, see, we therefore we see two different examples of the same nature of Christ. Right, absolutely. In a divine. Yeah. Humbling himself in the divine state and humbling himself here as a servant. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And not just as man. And that's why part of, <clears throat> of Carla's belief kind of makes sense, because although it is the same essence, he humbles himself before him, becoming man. That's why it, it, it's the same thing. All of this is this is Jesus and this is the Holy Spirit. It makes sense that all they all even though he is in the same essence, he is in the same nature, he humbles himself to some other type of nature. So mine says, but made himself of no reputation, taking form of bond servant and coming in likeness of man. As in there's two separate as in, two different times where he humbled himself right. yeah. before mm -hmm. someone else. One being God and one and being one to his own creation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and everything that was created was created through Him, and if not by Him, 
nothing would have been created. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What do you think? Jesse? I love this. I absolutely love it, because when uh, Christ says, um, if um, you've seen me, you've seen the Father, there's just a lot of verses where he's, he says that um, that he's a uh, the one, you know, that came down yeah. to to be the ultimate sacrifice, and just you can see his uh, divine um, nature. You, you can, and you're right. I and mean, there's a lot of instances in where um, Jesus, you know, it's always the like the question of well, Jesus never said he was God, right? And in, in a sense, in a sense, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah seven four. Uh, 714. And therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive a bit and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. God with us. So the virgin will give birth to who? A what? Hello? A son. The virgin will give birth to a son, and he will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? So the only way that makes sense is if, if it's this way. He can't, he can't be God if it's this way. Because then it's God in Jesus. And therefore it can be that he was he came to earth and became a servant and became born of a virgin and still be called God with us because therefore he's God and this is Jesus. Now it makes sense if it's this way, because he live he leaves this post, and he comes to Earth, called Emmanuel, God, with us, with humanity. That's why it makes sense that it's this way, or that way. No. Too early, it's too deep, or <laughs> John, let's go back to John. So, their father son relationship is for us to maybe give us a better picture. It's for us to of, understand exactly what the type of relationship that would that exists between, between them. them. Yeah, yeah. So I think that when I was, I think when we were growing up, that was something that, you know, made a difference because my dad and me, like, there's a sense of hierarchy, a sense of one has authority over the other. And, and right. even in John 3.16, yeah. you know, yeah. you see that, like, he was told to come. Yeah. If someone's telling someone to do something, it's we have to have the authority to tell that person to do something. So, but then that would make it against Jesus' own will to come if he was... But it would be outside of his nature to disobey and not humble himself. Okay. Uh, let me read this last one, and, and yeah, that's a good point, okay? Uh, Isaiah, stay in Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6. And it just, it's... It, it just re it proves itself. Um, Isaiah 9 6. Go ahead, Jesse. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So what is Christ being called? Mighty God. In the old instance, is Emmanuel in, in 7, 6, 7, 7, what, 14 was it? He's also being called God. Because in this state, he is God. So if we apply John 3, 16, we have to apply Philippians 2, 6. Right? 
That being in the very nature of God did not decide, did not take it for himself something to be his own advantage, right? Um, John 3, 16, therefore, Jesus, God loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, right? So it's the same thing. It's when, when... when in the verse where it says, and the government will be upon his shoulder, or my version says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. What government is he referring to? The Romans and the Jews. Is he speaking about the Romans? Specifically government? about Specifically? them. Yeah, because they were after him. The Jews were after him. It was his own people that were mm -hmm. after him, the Sanhedrin, and the Romans who killed him. And he will be called Mighty God, a Wonderful Counselor, Father, Prince of Peace. So when we look at Jesus' pre-existence or the state that he exists, Jesus Christ has always existed since the beginning. Now understand that the reason it's they call him Jesus Christ, and this is where Carla and I are going to get to an agreement, disagreement, Jesus the man, Christ the divine. Why would we argue disagreement? I'm not done talking. <laughs> <laughs> so we it's Jesus Christ because it's Jesus the man, Christ the divine. A hundred percent man, a hundred percent divine, the divine still keeping all of his attributes except one. Omnipresence. Because he's limited to his human nature. Okay? Jesus, the man, Christ, the divine, Jesus Christ. 100% man, 100% divine. Existing since the beginning. I'll do it, we'll do it later. <laughs> okay? Questions? This is not an easy thing to grasp, okay? I think this not. is the first one that, that uh, he's called both the Son and the Everlasting Father, both in one. It's the first verse that we reviewed today. Yeah, there's a couple more. I think we're out of time. But we're definitely out of time. Praise out, Rob.